Hello, everyone. Um, hope you can hear me okay. Um, welcome to the Urban Design Online Open House. Uh, we're very happy to have you join us this morning. Um, I'm here. Uh, my name is Kate Orff. I'm the director of the program, along with Associate Director David Smiley. Say hello, David. And we also have- Good morning. Three, good morning. <laughs> we also have three alums of the program, um, Herman, Victor, and what, who's the third one? Praditi. Praditi on the line, thanks for joining. So you have a great cross section of, of people with different interests and backgrounds and who have used their degrees differently. So thanks Herman, Victor and Praditi for joining. We have a brief um, slide presentation for you this morning, just to give you a sense of the program and its goals and its pedagogy. Uh, and then we'll open it up for Q&A and I'll ask, also ask Herman, Victor and Praditi just to say a few words about their experience and sort of what they're working on now. And there should be ample time for Q&A uh, by all. So you can feel free to put questions um, in the chat after the presentation and or just unmute yourselves and we'll, we'll speak up and I'll stop sharing the screen. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> welcome, glad you're here. Uh, this, uh, we are a post-professional urban design uh, degree program, and you can find us um, at this link, the arch.columbia.edu backslash MS Urban Design link. And I would just encourage everyone to go on to that link and also in particular, hit the circle button that says publications page, because a great measure of every program is, is the work of the students. And um, you can see just the amazing work of the students that's cited in so many different ways around the United States and the world as exemplary of an urban design program degree. So that um, publications page kind of unlocks a lot of the student work from the past. Um, we're on Twitter at Columbia UD and on Instagram at GSAP underscore AUD. And that Instagram is mostly just sharing and uh, former student work as well. So you get a good sense of that. So here we are, Kate and, and David, the program uh, leaders, and um, you, uh, you can find us um, uh, on the fourth floor uh, of Avery Hall. A snapshot of Columbia University, you know, even though you're, you would be a student in the urban design program, um, everyone, the vast intellectual and cultural resources of the university. Um, once you matriculate as a student, uh, there's just, uh, an array of concerts and, you know, um, many, many programs uh, that you um, have access to once you are part of Columbia, not to mention the incredible library system. And this is a view of our iconic south facing uh, low library steps. So again, this is Avery Hall uh, and our work takes place mostly in Avery and the adjacent uh, building, Fairweather. Uh, the lights are on. We we it's um it's a beautiful building. It was originally a library, and now it houses the architecture school studios and and a number of you know ad administration offices, et cetera. It's just a fantastic setting uh, here in Manhattan, New York. So when you come to Columbia GSAP, you also um, get to take advantage of the you know this the city of New York uh, as part of our learning lab. Uh, and here we are, we're on our program office is on the fourth floor. If you were able to come in person yesterday, you would have seen our office. So um, just quickly, um, I would say that um, we are unique in the sense that although we're M uh, MAUD program, Masters of Architecture Design, and holistically at global urbanization as a process, and really kind of nest that within a study of the climate crisis. So um, now um, the ways that we are living in cities and landscapes around the world are increasingly uh, untenable uh, and require new forms of research and design thought and attention. So we really test the agency of the designer uh, thinking about larger scales of territory and, as, and really approach the entire process as a gradient of inhabited landscapes, um, focusing on energy, mobility, capital, and social inequality, in addition to physical form and design in terms of built, you know, buildings and physical landscapes. 
So um, students that um, uh, come to Columbia just learn a lot of things. Like you will learn urban design, but you will learn to be systems thinkers. You'll learn how to communicate complexity, how your design work can be driven by an attention to engagement and kind of co-creation. You will learn to collaborate with others, which is frankly the key to success in the workplace. Um, and um, you will learn how to tell stories, build narratives and visualize these complex um, uh, systems. The, the urban design program since its founding uh, has been a leader in thinking about social justice and has a strong humanitarian ethos. Uh, and so we're really um, complex, using and looking at all the complexity of, of these systems that really comprise urbanism today. This is an example of just an in-person uh, review. Uh, that's David on the right, some longtime teachers in front of us and, and on the, you know, sitting on a panel. Um, this, for example, uh, was, uh, you know, it, it just an example of a student group working together, some very beautiful and complex graphics. Um, and uh, we both work in Avery Hall and outside of the hall. This is my, my seminar uh, when we're touring a resilience project of Lower Manhattan with the project's um, designers and engineers. Uh, so we literally did a walk around the base of Manhattan and understood the complexity of integrating this system uh, into Lower Manhattan. And so students are really out in the world, even though we do work very hard within the four walls of Avery Hall, we also go outside and, and, and understand Manhattan and, and New York at large in the sort of New York region. This is just an example of uh, end of year show kind of celebrating uh, the work of the studio uh, for graduation. We typically have, you know, quite a celebration. So you can see somebody peering behind a column there in their graduation attire, but um, uh, Columbia graduation, a great uh, affair and, you know, very, um, you know, celebratory and we get to show, show the work uh, within our studio in fair weather and or, uh, and we also have an online exhibit that I'll show you in a bit. So um, Dave and I are going to uh, discuss the pedagogical goals and the program structure. Um, it's a fairly clear and <coughs> beautiful structure. And I'm gonna hand it over to you to talk about the seminars, David. But the, the studios, it's, it's a unique program in that there is a three semester sequence. You start in June. And it's really clear in terms of what and how you learn and how that is sequenced up relative to scale and geography. So you start with New York City uh, with um, Professor Saki Golan and Nals Boron as uh, coordinators. The summer semester uh, is uh, that first semester. You're really learning tools. You're taking urban theory, um, reading New York urbanism, and you'll be um, very uh, have a very you know, carefully tailored digital technology course that aims to cater to you, your skills, your gaps, and, and try to get everybody to kind of a baseline level relative to the software and the program that we use. The second semester is led by Professor Emmanuel Adamasu. He's really focused on the a larger urbanized region. And then the third semester is led by me, and it's a global scale. So Quickly, um, David, do you want to speak to the New York City studio? This is your summer sure. semester. Great. Um, <clears throat> in the summer semester, we introduce you to uh, New York City, or I should say metro, metropolitan New York. Sometimes we, we go to New Jersey or out on Long Island. Um, but it's all about the, the, <clears throat> the, 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 the kind of life outside of the core of the city. You've all seen pictures of Times Square and other great New York monuments. But in fact, we we kind of move out from that and show the systems and complexities and um, the kind of uh, on the ground life of very different parts of the city. We have collaborative systems and this is just a typical scene where students are, or two groups of students are working on their, inter their analyses of certain reasons I can see, I think I see Jamaica Bay in the back and, on, and the tip of Manhattan. Um, so, so these students will be working on basically one or two neighborhoods, then they'll focus on social life, cultural life, um, ecologies and ecological questions, and um, just really uh, stress for you uh, the collaborative nature of, of all of our work. Uh, this is um, one of the, the, the seminars 
that's part of the studio <clears throat> is learning how to talk to people and interview people and and kind of create narratives on video with various tools and different equipment. Um, so we want everyone to be comfortable with going out in the world and and um, asking people questions and learning from people who use a place or visit a place. So this is a kind of key moment um, that comes back and forth um, all the time in the studio. <clears throat> this is just, again, that was just another review going on, a kind of midterm where there's a bunch of critics and there's a bunch of students and there's a kind of discussion. Uh, it's all about collaborate, collaboration. And even the, the critics in the room, some other planners, some are architects, some are community organization representatives. It's, it's really about the kind of um, shared learning process for everyone on both sides of that, um, the students standing and the critics sitting. Yeah. I would just add before, um, or if before we discuss um, the second semester that I don't want to give too much away, but we're starting to revamp the summer um, course and, uh, and studio title, and we're going to call it the 530 studio, which is representing the 530 linear miles of New York's waterfront. So we're going to, all of you will have um, a very exciting uh, framework for, for your um for your summer work, uh, I, I I also want to take that studio and and be a part of it. It'll be it'll be a great one. The second semester is really focused on regional change, land, property, race, ecological politics, housing, and social infrastructure. And our professor um, Emmanuel Admasu is leading this. In fact, our current students are heading to Atlanta. When is it, David? Tomorrow, I think, or Tomorrow. this week. This week, yeah. Do you want to talk a little more about Atlanta After Property as well? Sure. Um, <clears throat> the Atlanta studio uh, covers the Atlanta region, not just the center of Atlanta. And it, it examines <clears throat> in great detail the kind of ways in which policy, land ownership, and uh, property values and communities input or community not having input in, in the landscapes of Atlanta. So it takes on, uh, uh, <clears throat> It, it approaches social and racial inequalities head on. And we work with community groups and you can go to the next image. Yes. Um, and it started as a kind of, as those some of you um, may know or recall that um, that this started out as a kind of very much of a, of a critique of what um, we were worried about in American politics and American uh, policies with respect to how cities are governed, how cities are run. So um, we took this head on, especially during the, the period of, of uh, racial unrest that um, took place in the past, most vociferously in the past five years. Uh, the studio looks at reevaluating how neighborhoods work, how property relations work, how housing systems can work with respect to ecologies and built infrastructures. So this is a, this is a kind of revamped and renovated neighborhood um, along um, one of the, the uh, <clears throat> regional infrastructures uh, where students are asked to really delve into on the ground realities. This is a complex drawing that shows different ways to reuse, not necessarily to, re to build a new, but to reuse existing systems, infrastructures, uh, and help communities really deal with <clears throat> um, their kind of uh, their social life and wh what is called a kind of infrastructure of care where care is framed as a kind of uh, critique of urbanization of the past 100 or 200 years, and instead focuses on how to reuse and rethink ways in which streets can work, neighborhoods can work, uh, social resources can work. And Emmanuel is, has really um, taken the lead on this. Um, this is his second year of, of teaching this, and um, the students are really thrilled to understand something about uh, an American city that um, in many ways talks about inequalities that that are global in, 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 in most ways of thinking about it, but are also very specific to specific physical landscapes, ecologies, political and, and kind of uh, convention and policy systems. Uh, this is a remaking of, of a neighborhood through um, um, inserting new social infrastructures um, into a new context. And this is just, a, this is a rendering, a kind of sample of a kind of complex urbanism that overlays existing with new infrastructures, um, especially so, social infrastructures that have to deal with health and, um, and kind of uh, uh, public uh, ways of communicating. 
Yeah, and David, you mentioned something I just wanted to underline, which is that Columbia, and you'll see from our, our, our alums that will speak um, today, is just an incredibly global <clears throat> place. Like your, your, your classmates will be from Peru, China, India, Indonesia, uh, you know, uh, Colombia, all over the world. So it's really quite a global cohort, which is, which is just an incredible strength. But and so even though we're working in Atlanta and in and, and, and the New York region in these first two studios, the lessons are just broadly applicable. Like the, the challenges that are faced are are truly, you know, um, these are these are site specific, but there are just incredible learning oppor opportunities because they translate so much into to, to, to contexts where you eventually will learn, you know, live, learn, play, <laughs> practice. So the third semester, and that is in the spring semester, uh, starting in January, moving from January to May, is our third studio on global cities. And the focus is on climate, uh, kind of water informality, um, ecosystem resilience, and, and social capital. So this is uh, traditionally our global travel studio. Um, this is a picture from Pune, India, where and this is a kind of a typical thing that we do. We meet with community activists, leaders, mayors, you know, um, people from NGOs uh, and do a series of very, very intensive week-long interviews. We do an on-site workshop. This is Gita Mehta, Professor Thad Palowski and myself here as faculty. Um, and in the past um, eight years, we've been looking at the city through the lens of water. And this has been uh, a, a sequence called water urbanism. And so this is just a range of the kinds of cities and places that we go to. Uh, you can see a uh, range from Kanta, Vietnam, uh, to Addis Ababa, Belize, um, Amman, Aqaba in Jordan. And in general, we, we you know, travel, we always work with a um, partner, a university partner, for example, the Kanta University, in um, uh, in Vietnam uh, 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 and um, you know a, a series of other universities uh, uh, partnerships on the ground. So there's a lot of on-site exploration. Uh, we will visit you know open agricultural fields, forests, agriculture, be in the center of cities, um, and go on site walks with individuals here, this lower left is a preeminent, uh, the preeminent, uh, one of the preeminent uh, people in, in India who's studying uh, bi biodiversity in India, kind of giving us a tour along the Mulamutha River there. So students work on site. This is a, a, a diagram that was produced on site in Jordan about uh, obsolescence, increasing obsolescence of the water infrastructure that is supporting uh, Jordanian society. Um, and then we take that back and begin to think about how to integrate that into design projects and, and essentially proposals. So uh, we've, you know, um, done a whole series of different, um, different studios. In some cases, you have a choice of multiple sites. One year, you had a choice between these three sites, um, Bera Mozambique, Addis Ababa, and uh, Tel Aviv Yaffa. And then... Uh, during COVID, we, when we were not able to travel globally, we engaged um, the Mississippi, uh, America's largest river, and did a really fantastic site studio where we had 11 cities and mayors and sites along the Mississippi River that began to pull together um, into a larger one. And I'll put some of these links into the chat during the Q&A session. So, um, and these projects circulate widely and are, are you know, that I, um, People decision made Belize, which is uh, uh, something that um, is still being now circulated as part of the Global Resilient Reefs Initiative. Uh, and you can see the story map link below. Again, I'll, I'll put it in the chat, uh, or if we have time, I can come back to this and kind of page through it. Uh, and, you know, students just do this incredible work and, and drawings uh, and develop uh, essentially kind of projects that span city and countryside, nature, infrastructure, et cetera. David, over to you to talk seminars. Um, during uh, your time uh, at GSAP, um, the summer semester is, is fairly 
predetermined so you don't have to worry about what you're going to take. We have a series of classes that plug in to our um, our summer program. In the fall and the spring, um, we offer uh, an array of seminars. You are required to take one urban design seminar each fall and each spring. And the rest of the time, you are pretty much um, have um, uh, options around the university. But our, our seminars are really varied, trying to enable you to focus on topics that interest you. <clears throat> Um, and, and they cover a whole range of, of, of topics from uh, different forms of, of urbanism, uh, emerging urbanisms, what, uh, what our great professor Graham Shane calls recombinant urbanism, uh, public space, uh, difference and design, which takes up racial questions. Community engagement is a very important uh, uh, kind of area of our research and thinking. And so there's always classes uh, around that. Uh, and measurable cities looking at, at how cities um, can be redefined or have been redefined through different metrics and different um, different ways of, uh, of examining how property and landscape and how policies change them. <clears throat> Resilience, uh, you'll see in, in various of our offerings as well. A key aspect that Kate and others uh, also teach in seminars. Uh, we have um, housing, different kinds of housing questions because cities, um, you know, their, their main building type, if you will, is housing. Their main social type is housing. So we really stress that as part of urban design and architecture. And then other things like including human rights, uh, street design, um, uh, looking at the discipline itself, what is urban design, uh, trying to kind of examine our own history and our own role in, in, in change. And so there's, and, and the, you know, this changes a little bit each year. So there's different options. Um, so we're very excited by our seminars. We're, we're um, the, the professors are really committed to these topics and have, some of them are new. Some of them have been teaching them. Some of the, the professors teach these in other departments at the university. The human rights class is taught um, in a different division of the university as well as with us. So um, the seminars are, are um, great. They're really a thrill. <clears throat> the other uh, option uh, are uh, electives where you can actually pretty much the university is yours. Um, and I spend a lot of time uh, combing through all the offerings each semester, finding classes that might be interesting to our students um, from software related things, from social justice related conflicts and, and um, and uh, practices to looking at forms and 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 planning, looking at ecologies and inclusivity and sustainability. And some of these are in the public affairs school. Some of these are in the anthropology department. And um, you know, the, you just never know. The university is always shifting. It's huge, um, and we really want you to see your time at GSAP as also an opportunity to um, take advantage of Columbia as a whole because it is uh, a truly astonishing place. I've been here a long time, and I'm always pleasantly shocked at, at the possible um, things to look at. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, this is just a slightly more developed version of some of our classes up on the um, upper right, uh, contested sites, um, looking at the history of urban design and urban planning from social and racial and ethnic points of view. Uh, where you do analyses of, of different kinds of representation, different kinds of stories, different kinds of effects. Uh, on the upper left, that's me looking at um, public spaces. These are all New York public spaces, but in fact, um, no, I'm sorry. These are all in New York, I think, but the um, our focus is global. And I ask uh, the students to actually tell me about public spaces uh, where they're from. Uh, difference design on the lower left looks at <clears throat> the kind of policies and uh, outcomes of, of uh, racial division and racial policy making that affect um, mostly US projects. And this is co-taught by one of our professors, um, typically with another school, um, uh, a historically black college or uh, other universities. So it's actually um, sometimes it's half on Zoom because students are across the country. Uh, it's a really fascinating uh, outcome. And then finally on the lower right, I mentioned Graham Shane, whose book you can see, Urban Design Since 1945, and that little teeny image. I encourage you to take a look at it. Uh, it's a, an incredible compilation of practices, and, and that's another seminar you can take with him. I'm sorry, elective. I'm sorry. 
these are seminars. <laughs> I get mixed up myself. Uh, but these are just a smattering. There are, there are others. And when, you know, when, you, when it comes time, we'll present you the options and we'll make sure that you understand the different ways um, to work in the program. Yeah, and I think it's important to to underline um, that <clears throat> what's great about the seminars is we do really choose diverse topics, right? So if you're interested in GIS or, you know, or if you're interested in, you know, um, systemic inequality, like there are, you'll be able to kind of choose and select a series and cluster of seminars that works for you and what your interests are. So um, there, there are a lot of choices. And so you're able to kind of put together a, a you know, a package, if you will, in, in the sense that, that, uh, that, that is uniquely tailored to you. So um, we just have a, a kind of a closing couple of slides, this end of the year, end of year show, which is archcolumbia.backslash EOYS 2022. Uh, if you want to get a sense of the kind of online culture at GSAP and then click on the MS Architecture Urban Design page, because that does have a link to um, the studios in the sequence there. And um, I guess I'll just close with, uh, before I turn it over to Victor and Herman and, and Priti, uh, about just a little bit more about the, the culture of urban design. And I do feel like you know, it, it is a post-professional degree, so you will enter the program having a degree in architecture or landscape architecture. Um, and, you know, one of the, the challenges is to kind of move beyond the basic tool set to make you uh, you know, leaders and 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 in in practice and in work, and so a, a part of that is the culture of the urban design program, and that is um, basically you know in the studio context, working in in a collaborative way. Uh, and so our studios are team taught, so um, which is a, a great benefit because um, you know you have people with different backgrounds and perspectives in the same space. You're not just like locked in with like 15 people and one person, you know, you have a, an ability to kind of link up to and, and learn from individuals that kind of uh, you, 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 you know, would naturally kind of gravitate towards. And then uh, students um, in the studio context work in, in small groups. And so that's a big part of the learning experience. It's a big part of why our graduates are leading planning programs and leading uh, urban design and, and, and um, you know, offices in, uh, the, the world around, because uh, we do believe that great work emerges in the space between people and to be efficacious as an urban designer is a very, very different thing than being efficacious as simply an architect, you know, within the framework or the envelope of a building. So, um, so we're very, very interested in that. And we kind of bring the complexity of, of the city uh, into, um, into the classroom, if you will, so that we can learn from each other. So with that, I'll stop sharing um, um, and maybe turn it over to, to Victor. And, and um, maybe you all could just say hello and few, your background, a few words about yourself, and then we can turn it to Q&A. Q Go ahead, Victor, say hi. Okay, thanks, Kate. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Victor. Um, I was uh, the class of 2021 in GSAP, and then I had an architectural background. Um, I guess I can just briefly talk about my experience at GSAP and then what I'm doing now. Um, so, my, I mean, my experience there, Kate and David pretty much touched upon uh, a lot about it. It was a very applicable and honestly very impactful. So we had a lot of um, interactions with the community, including talking to local residents, uh, design leaders and even interacting with some political leaders. So like our group specifically in the first semester, for example, we made a con we made contact with the nonprofit group, which we continue working with even after the studio project. And then um, on top of that, uh, of learning how to engage with community, we also learned a, a lot of technical skills, such as uh, also chaos also mentioned, like GIS, which becomes very practical later on in life and work as well. So um, yeah, like in addition to building a strong foundational knowledge in the systems and cities, uh, everything you learn all becomes very applicable in professional work. Um, and then what I'm doing now, just really quickly. Uh, so I've always wanted to push my urban design knowledge uh, into the architectural realm. Um, I've always been a fan of Bjork Ingels, for example. So like his building Copenhill uh, is both a public ski slope and also a waste energy power plant, which is somewhat similar to one of my projects in GSAT. 
And right now I'm at this uh, retail design firm called NG2. And then I've always been uh, interested in retail because of their replicability and optimizability. So they have larger impact over the community across the whole globe. So for example, uh, look, uh, they, we do Costco's a lot, for example, and then the Costco in Mexico is both a public park and a soccer field, as well as just being a typical uh, Costco supermarket. So um, that's something I found to be really integrative of both uh, urban design and architecture. So um, just to conclude a little bit, I'm in Shanghai now, so I sort of hope that like, I can continue pushing the stuff I learned in urban design uh, and to like Asian countries even more than it already has. So yeah, that's so introduction. Hopefully it wasn't that, hopefully it wasn't Thank too Thank you. Long. Perfect. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Prati. Uh, I'm a 2022 graduate from the MSA UD program. And I just wanted to say that Kate and David have really summarized the program very, very well. Um, it has a very strong pedagogy distributed across three semesters and a very fast paced course. The three semesters just fly by and they really build on one another. So something that I want to emphasize on uh, is that this experience is going to be unique for each and every one who enrolls in the program because we curate our own program here and we continue to push beyond the existing urban theories and kind of project like own our project concepts and then form our own theories. So each of this is based on the, the background experience you are coming from. And our cohort's diversity was especially exciting because it contributed to the work we did. Uh, we were sharing ideas in a fast paced course which, in which each of them had their own relationship to space. And we were constantly learning about these different cu cultures and different perspectives of the city. So each of this kind of helped us understand um, what kind of, like it kind of helped us redirect our career paths as well. And this is how I landed where I am today, which is I'm an urban designer at Gensler and currently leading the climate adaptation and residence team for the city's urban design practice area. This is not something that I'd imagine myself doing, but the course has kind of let, like helped me shape my path here. So it's okay to not have everything planned out when you're coming into the program. It itself kind of teaches you the different career paths that you can take. So that's that's all from me. That's great. And and Herman and I, just a quick note, which is that I, I you know, uh, uh, the, these pathways are quite different. And I do feel that, the urban design program is kind of preparing you for a world where these, like Paditi's job title did not exist maybe even five years ago. So, you know, the world of design and planning and resilience and the integration of adaptation is rapidly changing. And so you will be equipped uh, to, to kind of take on these jobs in the future. Herman is combining research and teaching, Herman. Hi, Kate. Thank you, and David. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's great. Uh, sorry for the if there's any echo in here. Um, apologize in advance, but uh, yes, just to spend on what Victor um, can share as well. Um, uh, the experience of, of, of the program it was a, a life changing in my personal uh, experience. Uh, I'm from Colombia, and I remember when I start doing the program my favorite project was the highlight and then by the end of the program my perception of it just changed completely and since then uh and as an architect my background i definitely start thinking in a different way and um i graduated in 2020 right in the middle of the pandemic when just jumping into the professional uh realm was quite hard so i ended up applying what I learned uh, at the program in a competition in my country, trying to find new solutions uh, or new opportunities of helping people that have been suffered by COVID-19 pandemic. And surprisingly, that experiment started growing and started to grow and grow and grow. And the experience was technically uh, doing one same project as GSA, as the one that did in the program, but in real life, and uh, I figured out that that was one way that you can really apply what you learn in real life. It was pretty much about collaboration and working between community uh, and um, public and private entities. And based on that experience and during COVID, then I moved to London, UK, 
where I was trying to find a new experience where I get involved actually when I'm working right now. And I have to say that thanks to the experience of the program, I've been able to get involved and, uh, in a competitive way of developing and participating in projects uh, internationally uh, and being familiar with this kind of projects like working in Saudi Arabia. Uh, when I did the program, we went to the Great British Valley and I went to Tel Aviv in the Middle East. And then for example, those kind of things were an advantage for me just to understand better the context because it was part of my experience. And the approach of the projects is, 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 is different through a systemic and holistically approach, which is um, something that definitely marks that differentiator um, in our context. And right now, what I'm doing is uh, I'm in a role with the Architectural Association as a unit tutor with one of the professors of the program, James Fancy and one alumni, um, Eleni Glikonu, I think it's her last name. Um, so I'm extremely happy because I've been moving after my experience between the academia teaching and at the professional uh, environment as well, and being able to apply all the, learn, all the topics learned uh, through the program. So yeah, I think I will be happy to share more information if you want to know or questions or we can just answer any doubts. Perfect. Thank you. Just gives you a sense of the diverse outcomes of, of this degree program. Some of our graduates work at UN Habitat, some are working in professional practice. There's a there's quite a range. Um, David, do you want to help kind of moderate the Q&A? There's some fast and furious questions coming in the chat and maybe we can uh, just discuss them. Um, maybe, maybe there was one about the um, whether or not we can work during the semester and the difference between AUD okay. and UP. Um, I can um, start here. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, let's see. I was writing, but I'll just say um, AUD and UP, um, you know, they're one's called urban planning, one's called urban design, but remember we're AUD, architecture and urban design. So we have a history and a, and a epistemological connection to architecture. And so in some ways, um, UP is more statistical and informational and research of a certain policy type, whereas UD is spatial and um, infrastructural, and um, but they overlap greatly. And um, um, we like some of our professors teach in both programs. You can take uh, your urban planning seminars, and urban planners often take our seminars and electives. Uh, so there's good interaction, um, yeah. but it varies greatly. Um, there is no joint studio between UD and UP. Um, our schedules are so different and our expectations of studio are so different that the studios themselves do not overlap. Although in yeah. the fall and spring, you'll be right next to them. Well, so yeah, I did want to make a, a note about that. Because um, um, an urban planning studio is very different. There's maybe, you know, 15 people, one instructor, and the outcome of an urban planning studio might be a report or a couple of maps. And it's only, I believe, six credits where, where a, 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 a nine credit studio, it's a very different, a little bit more of design driven, uh, if you will, although design can be strategy and many, many things in the program. Mm -hmm. I did want to note, though, that um, this year uh, and in the spring, we have um, a unique studio where we um, have an urban planning professor, Hugo Sarmiento, uh, who is teaching a seminar that is being taught in parallel with our studio. So we actually have uh, quite a bit of overlap with planning students in the semester of this year. It's something that we're piloting and something that we're hoping to continue because I think um, what's 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 clear is there needs to be obviously a, a sort of a policy and de de design uh, dialogue uh, in order to advance more in, a, in you know innovation in the urban context. Um, so uh, so a lot of opportunity there, uh, particularly this spring for planning and urban design overlap. A uh, question about part time jobs. Um, we do not recommend uh, that you work because we want you body and soul uh, in the program, but. Um, that doesn't mean you cannot. Uh, there are different kinds of work. There's uh, casual work on the, that the, in the university offers um, in libraries or or other kinds of things. If if you're um, if you need to to work, 
uh, one or two students actually sometimes have part-time jobs in the profession. Uh, we recognize people have different needs and they're in different situations. Um, and we want everybody to feel comfortable um, that they can have a, a, a kind of uh, afford to uh, be in the program and, and to live healthy. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the work-life balance- Students want to speak to that too, and then we can go on to the work-life balance. I mean, some of you were jo had jobs like as teaching assistants, but yeah, as David is saying, um, I, I guess, I guess you know your choices are up to you. But a, a subtle opinion would be, you're at Columbia for this very precious moment in time, and so would it be more important to go and sit with the professor or go to a special lecture or would it be important to go and be an intern for a, an architecture firm i mean that would be your choice we do have um jobs you know on on, on campus which are maybe more doable i herman herman weren't you a, a ta yes 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 i want to i want to share that uh because right after i finished my the program i was a ta in the first semester um the summer this is the summer with dance um so that was a great opportunity as well just to of course to keep learning and to see the other side of it um that was also interesting and a great experience and i want to add to that um i mean it's, it's everything about balance because i remember when i started uh, the program my daughter was three months old so i was literally <laughs> doing the program and right after the studio get it home uh, as a dad role, first time dad role. And then, yes, I was a TA for Victor <laughs> when he was doing the, the, the program. So, um, yeah, it's a balance. It's totally doable. I, I think it's, it's something more about um, what, what you really want to do and, and, and following your passion and priority, of course, time management. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Any other thoughts there on work-life balance or working outside, Victor or Praditi? Yeah, I kind of agree with Raman. Um, it's the way you manage your time. And honestly, like when you work on campus, the jobs itself uh, help you support um, any kind of ancillary payments that you would need to do. And um, you really get a very diverse experience. When you're like, I was also a TA, for during the fall semester. And I knew that I was able to balance out work and um, the studio culture at the same time. So that's just. Um, I, I just didn't really quickly talk about it. Um, I didn't look for jobs outside of the program, but um, because first of all, there were just a lot of great lectures outside of studio and stuff to join as well. And then when I was talking, I really quickly touched upon that we uh, was work, we, we found a nonprofit uh, organization during our studio, which we continue work with after. Um, that was Henry Street Settlement. And then we ended up having, like I ended up personally contacting a little bit more and then we did some charity work for them as well. And then there was also a lot of other opportunities that uh, we touched upon during our studio work, uh, such as um, this place called Hamilton Madison House, also in New York. Um, and then we all, like me and my um, teammates, all opportunities to work with them regarding uh, their uh, work in charity. So there's a lot of experiences around in New York that's related to our work in studio as well. Fabulous. I saw a question uh, about um, um, uh, the sort of career services and, and that um, we actually have um, a new career services office uh, located on the third floor now. Uh, and so there, you know, there, I think it's something that's just kind of increasingly growing in important formal career services office where you can go in and get your resume looked at. There's very specific job listings that are targeted toward Columbia students. Um, and then, you know, as, as Praditi and, and, and others, um, basically, there's a kind of a, in, an email chain, and I always copy all students, which is like, here are 25 firms that have hired GSAP group students in the in the past and you know and as 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 individuals contact us and so on we just pass them along to you so um so in general you know the i would say it's a very very interesting kind of career market right now for 
uh, urban design graduates, particularly in this sort of climate adaptation uh, housing space, there's just a lot, there's just a lot of, of, of work out there. Um, so, and then I guess we would just encourage everybody to think um, in, you know, about diverse geographies, of course, and, um, uh, you know, um, in, in, in diverse, diverse places and in diverse forms of, of practice, whatever that might mean for, for you. Anything else on that, David, I should have added on career services? Career services runs a lot of events. Um, they have alumni visits, they have professional visits. Um, they become more and more active every year. Uh, it's great, very helpful. Also, also, also maybe just to add, uh, sorry, just, just to add that they also provide you mentors um, and the links with mentors. So that was super helpful as well. I, I made use of it. And, you know, there's also good to have another pers perspective of your portfolio, your resume, and a few tips about professional career and how to, how to jump into that uh, field. So, super useful. You can connect with the career services at any point during the semester, get your portfolios reviewed. If there's something that you want to change or if there's new field career that you want to explore, they'll work with you one-on-one uh, -on -one and help you kind of navigate through that. Yeah, I saw a question about the spring studio sites and I think Praditi mentioned um, in the chat, but um, every year we uh, look <laughs> at uh, a very, very diverse range of, of site alternatives uh, for <clears throat> gravel. Um, for example, um, I won't reveal where we're going this semester because <laughs> as everyone knows, that's like a hotly anticipated announcement that comes out usually in, in November, but um, the places that we were looking to hold studios and, and other options that we had for this year were um, Barbados and looking at island states and urban design in, uh, for island nations states. Um, um, we were looking at Argentina uh, uh, and uh, Santiago de Chile and uh, also Calcutta, India. So th that's just, th those were on the, the chopping block, the, the sites that we ended up not working in, but that just gives you a sense of the kind of range of places that we're always looking at. Um, and then the last one was Auckland, New Zealand, which at a 26 hour flight, uh, basically realized that that was not uh, something that was in the cards for us. but. Uh, and New Zealand uh, just granted uh, the rivers the status of, of human rights. So, uh, and we have a lot of connections there. So that was another option. So that just gives you a sense of the range of places that you might uh, be going. Hopefully not with 26 hour flights though. <laughs> we were also looking at, um, uh, uh, yeah, Bangladesh as well. And that was also too, too long of a, a, a journey for this year. What else? Any questions about degree requirements? Does anyone have any questions that have not been answered? We have about eight minutes left. David, do you want to talk about the, uh, or just describe the studio <clears throat> urban design seminar and electives dynamic again in terms of how many credits that they can take? Sure. Um, I, sh I shared the requirements page. Um, basically in the fall and the spring, you must take one urban design seminar. Those are small, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 people. And um, they're with urban design professors or planners or other professionals. The elective is essentially not a, a type of class. It could be very similar to a seminar. It's just that it's offered outside of the UD program. So it could be an architecture elective. It could be a planning elective. It could be an anthropology class. It could be a sustainability management class. Um, uh, it could be um, classes anywhere in the university that you and, and I find together. And so electives are more uh, open-ended um, and you only need to take one in the fall or spring. So the requirements leave you lots of room to make your own choices. We do encourage you to take electives both semester because Columbia University, as we've said, is, is heaven in many ways, and you want to take advantage of it as much as possible. And I think 
Some students uh, do the 45 credit basics, which includes studio uh, seminars and an elective, but you can take many more classes than that. And um, I think uh, it's up to you. You know, it, it's, it's how you feel, how comfortable you feel uh, with your workload, with balancing other things in your life. But we really stress that uh, it's one year. It goes like lightning, uh, as everyone will attest to. And so while you're here at GSAP, we encourage you to take advantage of every minute. Um, and they're just lectures and seminars and, and all sorts of workshops. So um, and please send me an email if you have other questions about um, different particular electives or seminars. <clears throat> what else do I see? Um, I think you addressed it, but you know the the program does begin um, the first week of June, and we get our um, admit letters out as soon as possible. Uh, and you know, typically, you, you know, there have been moments where. There's been um, a two week delay when a student can't get their visa and we do kind of an online period, but in general, you know, it, it does provide enough time for a visa to be obtained. Um, so, um, and then we are, our, our, our office, our international student office works closely with, with, with everyone to, to make that happen in terms of getting here the, the visa. And then, you know, the STEM program designation uh, is quite exciting. Obviously, it means that you're, you have a, a fairly intensive period after you graduate um, to, to work um, in the United States for, I believe it's a period of three years or two years. So three, three years. Yes. Yeah. So it's yes. a, a really, um, it's an important designation and it gives you quite ample time to, to, um, to work in the U.S. if that is what Great. Any other final questions? Um, I, I I put the our emails um, in uh, in the presentation, but I'll put my um, email in the chat and then uh, as well as David's. Um, and you can ask us any questions uh, if you have any further questions. Um, typically, um, uh, you know, if you have a financial, you know, we don't handle financial aid directly. But um, you know, but but we can we can try to direct you to the right person. We'll we can mostly answer questions around um, the program and so on. But feel free to um, you know send an email and copy both of us if you have any any other questions uh, about the program. We would be super excited to have have all of you here. Um, I, I I suppose like what why do you think is it, well? There's so many things that are very special, but you're really a cohort, right? So it's like Herman's class, you know, like each of the classes has such a personality and a dynamic and you all learn from each other. Uh, and it's very different than just going through a school with, you know, like more rant, you know, kind of like a wild assortment of, of different, it's, it's very much that you're, you're sort of a cohort and you really learn a lot from each other and you become, you know, close uh, with, uh, with the people in your class. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a very, it's a unique experience, I would say, uh, among, among many. So, um, yeah, so with that, I guess we'll we'll close and say thanks to Victor Haman and Pradsti and for, for joining and um, appreciate you sharing your experiences. And to all the prospective students, we would love for you to apply to and hopefully attend uh, the program. If we can be of any further help in, in making your decision, just communicate. Don't worry about, oh, we don't want to bother them and send an email. Feel free to send an email and feel free to communicate if you have any questions whatsoever. Uh, we want you to feel like you're totally comfortable. We want you to come uh, and, um, and be part of the program. And uh, we're greatly appreciative for, of, of all of you. So thank you again so much. I will close the meeting. Make sure you take down our, our emails and um, we look forward to hopefully seeing your applications and, um, and we're just appreciative of, of everyone's time this morning again. 
Alrighty. Bye-bye. Thanks.